So Dias Astrophysics has a group of nearly 40 people at the moment. Uh, we study the sun, uh, we study star formation, uh, we look at interstellar gas clouds, we also study more exotic astrophysics uh, using high energy photons, gamma rays that travel from uh, huge cataclysmic explosions at the very edge of the universe. Um, and we also study plasma physics of planetary magnetospheres as well. So that's looking at, say, Jupiter or Saturn, which these, have these enormous magnetic fields. And uh, we try to understand those as well. So there's 40 of us at the moment. And uh, we're based at Fitzwilliam Place in the city centre and also now at Dunsink Observatory. And uh, that's a new frontier for us to, to bring research back to Dunsink Observatory. I lead a new research team here at Dias, and my team study planetary magnetospheres, so that's the magnetic environments around planets including Mercury, Earth, Jupiter and Saturn. And my team also use some of the latest techniques in data science, including something called machine learning, to get the most out of data sets because we have decades and decades of data from spacecraft throughout the solar system and the most efficient way to analyze those data is to use advanced processing techniques to help the computer to learn what it's seeing with input from a scientist and to speed up the analysis that we can do. So my team is using the latest data from missions including Cassini at Saturn, including Juno at Jupiter, and soon to include Bepi Colombo at Mercury. My main role at the moment is working on STIC, which is an instrument on board uh, the Solar Orbiter spacecraft, which was launched in February uh, from Cape Canaveral. But the reason that we studied the X-rays is because they're related to solar flares and CMEs, and they're the big massive explosions on the sun, and that's really where my research interests lie, about trying to understand how and why these explosions occur, and then also what effects they can have on us here on Earth also called space weather. Um, so I work in what's called space weather forecasting. Um, so space weather describes kind of changing conditions in what we call the environment surrounding Earth. Think of weather, um, but for space. So on Earth, we have um, kind of everyday weather, like rainy, cloudy, sunny days, and then we have more extreme events like snowstorms or tornadoes. We kind of have the same kind of things in your space and our upper atmosphere. So the sun can cause everyday space weather, it's called the solar wind, and our everyday space weather are things like the northern lights, so those gorgeous light displays in the night sky. And then we can get the more extreme events too, like the hurricanes and the tornadoes, and they're called solar eruptions. So they're eruptions of radiation and hot gas and particles, and they can impact us on Earth in a much more extreme way. Now, not our health, we're fine, we're nicely protected by Earth's magnetic field, but it will impact our technologies. So we might get radio backouts or spacecraft instrumentation kind of failures or things like you know satellite navigation disruptions. So forecasting is all about trying to predict when these events will occur. So think about weather forecasting, you might have your smartphone app and it'll say, you know, there's a 10% a chance of rain tomorrow. We do the exact same thing, but for solar eruptions. So I'm using lots of maths and software programming and, and physics of understanding the sun to try and predict when an eruption might occur and hit the earth. I use an instrument called a low frequency array or LOFAR. And LOFAR is a radio telescope, basically it has multiple sites spread right across Europe, all the way from Ireland over to Poland, uh, there's a station being installed in Italy, and it has a central hub in the Netherlands as well. The data from all of these individual telescopes is brought together by fiber optic link in the Netherlands, and a supercomputer basically uh, digitally creates a telescope with the effective size of the European continent. So this is one of the largest telescopes in the world. So I am involved in processing the data really fast using machine learning algorithms, artificial intelligence, and then trying to make sense of the data to see where space weather activity occurred on the sun. And if we can process it really fast and in real time, we can almost see in real time what's happening on the sun. So it gives us a better protection for technologies on Earth. I'm part of the star formation group. So we study um, magnetic fields and also accretion and ejection of young stars, so like protostars. And specifically, I work pretty closely with Pauline and Alessio, uh, studying class one protostars, one in particular that I've been studying. And it has a disk around it and a jet. And you're 
basically studying kind of the interplay between the disc and the jet and the angular momentum between those and how the object that I'm studying seems to increase in brightness over a few years and then decrease again and then increase again, but not, not periodically. So we're studying this kind of strange accretion burst in the star. So I did a physics degree at the University of Limerick and part of that was a co-op program. So that was a nine month work placement. And I did my work placement at University College London at somewhere called the Mullard Space Science Lab. And during that time, I worked with data from the Cassini mission to Saturn as Cassini was approaching the planet Saturn. And that was really my first taste of proper scientific research. And from that point forward, I was absolutely certain that that was what I wanted to spend my entire career doing. So that was a real turning point to move from lectures and the classroom into a real research environment and see what that day-to-day -day experience would be like and I loved it. When I had to choose the subject of my master thesis I decided that the group that was doing research in astronomy was interesting, young, fun and so that's where I went. Oh that's a really great question. Um, I think I always loved space kind of stuff in school. I don't think there was one particular thing or person that influenced me just loved all kind of NASA stuff and space things. And I was also really um, good at like physics and maths in school. So it was kind of a natural progression for me to go on to study astrophysics. It's very nice because you get to travel quite a bit. You get to go to conferences and meet lots of different people. You get kind of different opportunity to live in different countries, um, which you just don't in other industries as often. Um... I guess you get to discover really new things about the world. You get to be involved in you know, the generation of ideas that no one's thought of before, the generation of completely new knowledge, kind of pushing the frontiers of what we know about the world, about the universe, about our nearest star. Things people didn't know a year ago, never mind you know, 100 years ago, we're, we're, we're always discovering new processes. Well, I mean, it, it shapes the way you think quite a lot, although scientists are also very different one from the other, so it's not that there is a uniform way of being a scientist also. But certainly there is a lot in common in the end that you realize when you deal with your colleagues and when you deal with people who are not scientists at all. So there is a kind of imprinting that with time uh, affects your personality as well. To be honest, I think what I like most about being a scientist is just that I get to spend my day doing something that I really love, that I'm really passionate about, and just working on something that I really enjoy. Oh, you know, I, I think and, and, and it's sort of changed as I've kind of, I think, expanded my career a bit, but I really love the communication side of my research. So, you know, doing research is so much fun, but I do like kind of talking at conferences and giving public um, outreach talks and things like that, because I think it's really important for us to be able to communicate our research to everybody else rather than just, you know, huddling in a corner and working away at a computer. <laughs> I'd say one of the best things about my career has been the opportunity to work with data from NASA's Cassini mission. Cassini orbited Saturn for 13 years and I started working on it at the beginning of my PhD and through my early years as a postdoc and I still work on that data set today. And I use the Cassini data to understand how Saturn's magnetic environment behaves, to look at the aurora, so the northern and southern lights on Saturn, and I use an instrument called the magnetometer, which measures Saturn's magnetic field uh, to understand how the magnetic field is changing and how that helps to produce dynamic displays like the aurora.